I'm Huntley Mitchell, news editor at BT, and today I'm joined again by Carl Treacher, Group CEO of the Brand Institute of Australia, and Jane Power, Bupa Australia's Chief Marketing and Customer Officer. Thanks Welcome for having to you me. Both. Thank you. Now, I'm sure, as a lot of you may remember, Bupa entered the uh, health insurance space in Australia a few years back, and uh, it had a find a healthier you proposition that it brought to the market. And Jane, I want to start with you, how has the marketing journey been since then and, and how has the strategy evolved for the brand? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, as you said, when we started in this market, we were a health insurance business and we launched that um, branded health insurance business with the Find a Healthier You campaign and sort of brand platform. Now we are a completely different business. So we are now a health and care company. We're the largest dental provider, the largest aged care provider, as well as um, the leading health insurer in this market. So we're a very different business now and therefore our brand positioning and strategy needed to evolve with that. So our positioning now is all about positioning us as a health and care company. What we know is that when we talk to our customers about the breadth of what we do, they actually feel more favourable towards us as a health insurer. And the reason that matters is because health insurance is actually very close to tobacco in terms of reputation and, and trust levels. So um, it's really important that we actually have quite a different conversation with our customers and that's what they tell us is they're looking to us to actually provide much more of a health and care holistic solution than just an insurance um, product. Next question, uh, how integrated is, is Bupa's marketing with its customers experience say in store for example? Hmm. Well, we've, we've talked a little bit um, about the store. I mean, we would like to think that, um, you know, the brand needs to be, um, you know, omnipresent really, regardless of channel and regardless of environment. So whether it's a store environment or a digital environment, um, you know, your brand is the biggest asset that you have. So consistency is super important. Um, we call that the blue glue is sort of how we uh, think mm. about our mm -hmm. brand sort of ID and standards. Mm. So what's the blue glue that, you know, needs to be mm. wherever you go and however you experience us? Um, what are those things that people expect and therefore we need to deliver on so you know you'll always see the blue cube as an example um, but I think more recently um, we've thought a lot more about tone of voice and um, if you think about what we've talked about around the caring platform or what you know what is a caring brand need to sound like and feel like and um, and that has permeated through to design and, and things like that so the retail environment that we called retail next mm. um, really started with brand at its core and then as I said coupled that with what problems did we need to solve you know when they're choosing to um, transact with us or engage with us through that environment so um, yeah I mean it's really brand 101 isn't it it needs to be wherever your customers are and however they choose to engage engage with you, um, they have expectations and we know that when a customer sees the blue cube, that comes with it a series of expectations and so we need to deliver on that. So I've, I've got one more question for you, Jane. Uh, in the world of health insurance and allied health services, what types of brand activity uh, getting cut through and, and why? Mm, look, I would probably say nothing really stands out for me, okay. if I'm really honest. Um, I think brands like A Chemist Warehouse, I think is doing that value positioning very well. And, you know, as we talked about earlier, we know that value is a real issue for health insurance right now. Um, but I think, um, you know, the brands that I'm watching are more what I'd call experience led brands. I mean, what's Apple doing with health? Where's Amazon going to go in terms of health? Um, I think that's what I'm really um, interested in and keeping an eye on. Um, I think um, we've got a big trust crisis. I mean, that's broadly talked about um, and insurance is sort of at the bottom end of that. So we've got a role to get the basics right, deliver value, but as I've talked about, we really need to be this guide and helping hand for our customers. That's how we actually demonstrate real value and that's how we differentiate across the whole sort of health and care spectrum. So we think there's a big opportunity there and that's certainly what the um, sort of health and care repositioning that we started sort of two years ago and relaunched again, uh, relaunched with 
life as a gift in um, January. So we think that's a big opportunity for us. Companies come to us essentially because they recognise that there's difficulty somewhere between the vision and strategy or purpose and strategy through to the last three feet in front of the customer. So how do we make sure that what we know to be right, which is some of the things you spoke of today, is actually conveyed in a meaningful manner and a compelling way to our customers so they actually understand that we're not price gouging, we're not there taking money for nothing. There's a real interest in, in their care and well-being. To what extent is uh, Bupa constructed organisationally to bind those two concepts together? I mean, I'm really talking about culture and uh, organisational assets like brand and, and vision. Brand needs to be owned by everyone in the organisation and and that's always your hardest task as, as a brand um, you know, marketer or a CMO, whatever it might be, um, because it's so much more than the campaign that people sometimes see as the brand bit. Um, because you can say one thing, but if the experience at the moment of truth is completely different, you've completely wasted your money. So, um, so yeah, that's a task, you know, you need to be um, on that every single day. Um, I think we're really lucky in that um, our people do tend to be very values based, very purpose driven, that I think it's easier to deliver that perhaps than you know other organisations that might not necessarily have that quite emotional connection, I suppose, um, with the brand. Well, that's just about all we have time for on Beneath the Brand. I want to thank Jane for uh, coming along and providing us with uh, an insight into the Bupa brand. Thanks for having me. Uh, and thanks again, Carl, for um, flexing your branding wisdom oh, once again. <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> um, remember, you can check out the rest of our podcast or vodcast episodes on YouTube or SoundCloud, or you can simply head to BNT. Uh, until next time, I'm Huntley Mitchell, and thanks for watching. <laughs>